Today we'll be showing off the SM Cathedral Hunter boost. Again, big shout outs to Zero G and Keyvan. Uh, I copied a lot of their uh, strategy and poll and watched a lot of them and they're just great guys overall. So definitely should check them out and I'll link them down below. So we'll start with running through the tunnel and we'll be using Feign Death inside of the fountain area in order to start scouting for the sorcerers. The sorcerers uh, mess up our poll because we don't have self-healing and they slow us and they eventually just kind of whittle us down during the kill phase. So we take care of the ones that are mostly in our way. You can skip along the pathway uh, while being clever about your Eyes of the Beast poll. Um, but if there are any sorcerers in the bottom right circle here, they're mandatory because they'll get pulled during the kill phase. Um, you know, really a lot of this art of uh, this boost is knowing what you can skip and what you can leave behind in order to get the pull going so that you're, you know, under 20 to 15 minutes. Um, you shouldn't worry about pulling a few extra mobs when the time could just be better spent in uh, another reset doing just more mobs overall. After we clear the bottom, we go up top and do the same, clearing sorcerers in our path. I'll often skip the whole left covered pathway and just get the ones on the right hand side and on the grass. During the pet pull, we take uh, the pathing on the right side and you'll see why later. Now we set up the pull to open the door, putting our pet on the lower level with stay and sending them in with dash. We use this technique a lot in tribute runs. You'll put your pet on stay, pull the mobs with dash, and then you use your wolf's howl ability while you're close to it so that it gets aggro from buffing you and keeps the attention of the mobs. Then once you press passive, not follow, but passive, it'll return your pet to the stay position that you set it at before. I open the door here, and then I slightly outrange my pet to despawn him then use Howl again so that the mobs are looking at him again instead of me and sending him into the cathedral to uh, just outrange him again while I get back over here to feign death and reset everything. If your pet gets dazed here during the uh, run up to the door, it's likely a reset. They can make it out of it, but it's likely a reset. And here's the start of our pull. Jumping onto the evade spot here to be safe and make sure none of the uh, mobs go onto us. We'll use Eyes of the Beast and Dash and run around picking up our mobs. Trying to jump turn where we can to avoid getting dazed. If you do get dazed, it's likely a reset on the pole. It's not a big deal. You just feign death. Wait for them to like kind of run back to their position, res your pet, heal them up, feed them up, and just go at it again. Again, the art is if, you know, you skipped any of the sorcerers pulling it in a way that you won't body aggro them during this whole loop around of everything. You can even use the ledge that we use for the kill phase in order to kind of stack up the mobs if you do get in a sticky situation. And we'll go up here to the ledge where I was talking about earlier. And this is the spot where we cast Eyes of the Beast. Eyes of the Beast can be recast without any special macro, but it's a little finicky ability where if you move too soon after the end of the cast, it moves your player character and not your pet, so then it cancels the channel. We run up here, aggro Mograine is the last guy, infidels they must be purified, and we drag just as far enough away as we can. Sometimes you can go further, sometimes it's not that far, and we just pick up any little stragglers that we can along the way. It's not a huge deal, but you can get quite a few. And we want to stack up the mobs as best as we can. If you can't stack it up that well, we'll show you how to kind of take a lap and reset them a little bit. If the mobs aren't stacked up well, you can take a lap here like I do, where you have Mograine kind of on the lower level and run away. You can put a frost trap on the corner if you've got it. And you just want to try and run away with Cheetah without getting dazed. 
and be smart about turning it off once like you jump because there can be mobs down there and everything. Um, a few helpful tips on this kill phase are doing the rapid up downs off the ledge in order to stack them. Uh, you want to try and stack them up around the corner because the corner is where they try to kind of change their position and it takes the longest. Another helpful tip for this is um, using uh, forward and backward movements when you're going up and down the ledge in order to have the mobs update their recalculation of your position. Um, the change in direction just kind of does that. It's weird coding stuff. So that way you can get the mobs a little bit more clumped up and have them predictable. I usually focus down Mograin as my main target, uh, send my explosive shots to them. He kind of drags it through the pack. Otherwise, I'll try and focus down the leading kind of mob that is uh, out of sync with the rest of them just so that they don't mess with me. But Herod is definitely the most dangerous. Another great thing to have is the PvP trinket, speaking of Herod, because he does a nasty hodge if he gets too close to you and it can just... it can. You, Get, it just kills the run. You're stunned, you're done. You're done, son. The more that you do this, you'll get a feel for how the mobs path and how you can help to restack them without a lap. Doing the rapid up-downs is a really big part of that. Um, you can also kind of go wide out on the strafe in order to help drag the mobs so that they have to take a little bit longer of a path to catch up. You'll get a feel for it, and the more that you do it, you'll understand just kind of how it goes. Um, if you do go oom, you can turn Viper on, you send an explosive trap into the pack, and then boom, you got full mana. You keep juggling, you keep trying, you'll get the kill phase down. And honestly, I think that the kill phase is kind of the easiest part of this whole thing. Uh, the setup is a little bit of maneuvering around and hoping that your pet doesn't get dazed and cleaning up the casters that are in your way, but it's definitely doable. I've known a lot of hunters that have, you know, picked this up very, very quickly. So I think that if you follow this through, it'll help make it even easier. So we see here, my priest was getting 95,000 an hour in a solo boost, 22,000 experience from the run from 80 mobs took about 14 minutes, 15 minutes really, but it's a good boost. Uh, people are charging about 10 to 15 gold per run per person. It's about 75,000 EXP per hour that way, about 15k a run, depending on the level and everything. It, you know, your results may vary, but that's about the average. So it's very good, very lucrative and really good for your EXP. I stream this and other hunter type shenanigans on Twitch. You guys can follow me, same name, Jay Tulo. And you guys should definitely check out Keyvan and Zero G if you want to see more of this kind of boosting and weird type farming, damn near exploitative gameplay. It's the best. Check them out. I'll link it all down in the description for all three of us.